four or five students have uh, come online still. Right. Take the uh, assignment that I have given on the URC 522. I hope that you have uh, uh, taken a printout of this URC 522 assignment. Just tell me whether you have that assignment with you, taken a, a hard copy, at least one or two people. You all have the, the handout that I'm talking of? Okay, thank you, uh, Gihani Mihara. Uh, right, uh, I hope you have been uh, hard copy format. Uh, it's good uh, to have a hard copy so that you can uh, write down a few notes here and there, or important articles that I mentioned so that you could refer later. But this is how I do the assignments. I will uh, explain the questions, try to simplify the question as far as possible, and uh, give the uh, hints of the clues supporting with the articles. Remember, any URC, UCP, or Incoterm articles when you are questions when you are doing, you have to support with the particular article. That article number need not mention because the examiner will not you know half want you uh, to get the number correctly. That is not necessary. You will not get marks cut if you do not uh, mention the particular article. And for that matter, if you misquote the article, even doesn't matter. But then. When I suggest the answer for you, unless I give the article or the sub-article as a reference, you will not be able to uh, get the answer fine-tuned or see whether it's properly been uh, said by me even to make a verification and uh, to have a wide, uh, wide knowledge, you need to have the article. The reason why I'm giving the article, otherwise, no end of by heart in the article and uh, get ready for the uh, answers. So, so I will try to ex explain the question. For example, question number one, I have not uh, given the numbers, just the first bullet. So I will explain the question and I will give the answer. And uh, the way that, uh, that you need to structure the answers, I will uh, give. Right? So treat them as the suggested answers. Uh, only thing you have to, you know, uh, study the suggested the answer that I am giving, and the main thing is you need to learn and get yourself groomed how to present the answer, not in para form, uh, but in bullet form. Right. And if there is anything that you can't understand, uh, just make a nudge on the listing. But still, I feel only very few students have logged in. Nevertheless, we'll start. Right. <clears throat> You are five twenty two assignment one question one. And if there's anything to us, you can actually unmute the mic and then ask me. Right. I will read out the question with you. Your bank has received a set of shipping documents accompanied by a draft drawn on 90 days date, covering an export uh, from Sri Lanka requesting your bank to collect the bill and credit the proceeds to their account with your bank. Now, the, the paragraph says, your bank has received a set of shipping documents accompanied by a draft drawn on 90 days date covering an export from Sri Lanka uh, requesting your bank to collect the bill and credit the proceeds to the account with your bank. Right? So it's a user's bill because it says draft drawn on 90 days. So the first thing that you should come to mind is the user's bill. User's bill. 
when they are for use as bill always there could be an intersectoral part in intersectoral part so i will say intersectorals this applies this applies only just as a delay in payment on the due date right that also so has to be mentioned in the covering letter or correct it said it has to be the it has to be the correction instruction right next paragraph the covering letter now if you have the hard copy underline the word covering letter and say correction instruction it's not the covering letter actually it has to be the correction instruction right so covering letter even if they state as a covering letter you have to take that as a correction instruction because correction documents do not accompany with an enclosure but a correction instruction the covering letter also states the full details of principle and the drawbies the amount and the currency to be collected the method of payment form of payment and advice payment advice instructions in case of need uh instructions in case of non acceptance and on non payment that is the case of need we discuss in article 25 and though, uh, and that no interest is payable right summarize the with reasons five other instructions you could ask from the exporter in order to handle this correction while safeguarding the interest in your bank right summarize with the reasons five instructions you could see from the exporter in order to handle the correction instruction right now i told you with the correction instruction correction instruction which states in the sub article 4b there are eleven items there are eleven items so when i'm doing the assignment you have to have the assignment with you and also the urc if i get to hand out near you so that you can quickly refer the articles that i'm referring to right so out of these eleven items there are few items being given right that is the uh, details of the principal and the drawbies amount and the currency to be collected the method of payment form of payment and by such in case of need like that so they are asking summarize with reason five other instructions so that means that goes without saying that you have to buy hard all the level the one instructions right now this question was taken from a past paper september 2009 september 2009 right so you can take down the answer as per article 4 as per article 4 now when i say as per article 4 it covers the whole article that is article 4 a b c d right so as for now if you don't remember the particular article article 4 then you see as per you are see 522 right no harm in there but you have to, the point that you are making has to be very precise right as per article 4 actually is 4a right as per article 4 of urc 522 you are taking down right fine the correction instruction should state the correction instruction should state 
the correction instruction should stay should stay semicolon one below the other you can list down they are asking only five no uh summarize the business five are instructions no you can write down five if you're not quite sure you can write down six or seven but you are getting uh only five marks for that if the if our answers are correct right but the allotted marks are 10 that means for every point that you give you get you uh, you get two marks right as for uh, as for you are uh, as particle four of you are the 522 the correction instruction should state following subjected to urc 522 subjected to urc 522 that is the most important thing but it comes under 4a is subjected to urc 5 otherwise the recipient of the document will not know how to handle the document they have to say specifically how we are going to handle the documents is according to the urc 522 otherwise common law applies Subject to URC 522. Details of the present impact. Now, here the questions they have given the principle of the draw is needed, but the present impact details are also needed. Present impact is the bank, the draw is bank. That is the bank which delivers the documents to the drawing. So, we need to have the present impact details. But, present impact details, that is the details of the present impact. Right? The most the, the important thing is. Next one, list of documents. List of documents. List of documents. List of documents and then numerical count. List of documents and then numerical count. So I'm giving those instructions in a very brief form without referring to the articles. So you have to refer to the article and fine tune the point that I'm telling you and graph the item. Right, with some documents and a numerical order. Then, terms and conditions, terms and conditions, of the delivery of the document. Charges, next point, charges or interest, if ready, to be corrected. Charges or interest, if ready, to be corrected. So I may have given four in there, four or five. So you can read the article 4B and get uh, more points out of the level. So that's how you construct an answer. Right. Next one. Your bank has received a document a collection from one of your correspondent banks abroad, drawn on one of your customers on DB terms and subject to 522. The retrieval could have been dispatched by your freight consigned to a bank. Briefly describe the position of your bank in relation to the goods as provided in URC 522. Now here, I'll read out the second, uh, second line of the paragraph once again. That is the catch you find. Your bank has received a document correction from one of your correspondent banks and brought fine. Don one of your customers on DP terms under the 522. That's not all right. The third sentence is the cash in there. The relative goods have been dispatched by your freight, consigned to your bank. So underline the words consigned to your bank. Consigned to your bank. Consigned to your bank. Consign to your bank. Right. Now that's the catch. So the examiner or the paper sitter wants to find out from the student whether you have understood the concept of the consign, consigning or assigning the documents to the bank without their consent prior. Right. So you say, as per 
tell you one of uh, one of the guys in here in the forum can you mention the, what does uh, the re re relevant article they are hopping on this if you if if you are unable to do so it's all right can i just tell me if you if somebody knows the article without referring to sub article at least the main article 8 9 10 or like that what is the article if you have studied well you should know so i'll give uh, just a couple of seconds very good purnima is article 10 is article 10 so i will not give an extent credit for purnima who have written that but that shows not that uh, she or he is in fingertips on the article but at least at least once she or he has gone through the notes that what is important right now take it down as per sub article 10a of urc 522 as per sub article 10a of urc 522 good should not be dispatched good should not be dispatched to the address of a bank dispatch directly yeah? directly directly to the address of a bank or consign to consign to c o n s i g n e d consign to to a bank without prior agreement without prior agreement underline the words without prior agreement without prior agreement with a prior agreement on the part of that bank on the part of that bank so that's what if you have the articles you just refer the article 10a similar words or similar expressions may be stated in there so without prior agreement you cannot dispatch documents directly to a directly addressing to a particular bank that is the first rule you have to get prior consent because the reason why is the draft group or the people who have drafted these uh, articles may have written that because in the collection order banks is unaware of the transaction until they get the documents to their hands so they just get entangled when the documents are consigned to themselves which they have not facilitated this uh, transaction beforehand it is not a credit facility so there are no collateral debt to cover the interest of the bank so you cannot you know directly dispatch to the documents of the bank address into them right or consign to them mainly that's the correct word consign to them mainly without prior to that is one right the second point that is the point one or you can say uh, yes point one the second point nevertheless nevertheless remember these words nevertheless that's a negative conjunction nevertheless however although even though that you don't start a sentence with although to express a point in case of a trade uh, question sometimes those words are welcome you should you don't you know start word this uh, word with although right so it could be seen as improper in english but then when you use that word the examiner or the marker uh, what you call the paper marker will know that you have you have a point in there because there are the negative point you are going to just state so he will not just waste time by trying to read with lot of constraints of your bad hand fist he will give a mark so remember press the sensitive nerves of the examiner as well by giving certain 
plus uh, pros and cons. The reason why I wanted you to underline that word, without prior agreement, so the examiner or the particular paper marker will hunt for those words. So he will not expect you to present properly or it uh, to make it very sensible or a uh, grammatically correct sentence in there. He just want to know whether you have understood the article, whether you are expressing that article properly. That's all. Right. So nevertheless, nevertheless means in contrary to what I said in the point A. You are not supposed to send the documents assigned to a particular bank, consigned to a particular bank without prior notice. Nevertheless, if you do so, that only I'm going to say now. Right. Nevertheless, in the event that the goods are dispatched directly to the bank, nevertheless, in the event that the goods have the goods are dispatched directly to the bank. Now, when I say directly to the bank, we directly address to the bank, right? Or consigned to the bank. To release the documents against exchange, to release the documents on ex against acceptance, to release the documents against acceptance or against payment. Come on. Such bank shall have no obligation, underline the words no obligation in there. Such bank has such bank shall have no obligation to take delivery <coughs> of the goods. Of the goods. Just because you have, you know, consigned the goods to me and the bank, consigned the goods to me, I have no obligation to take the delivery of the goods. You cannot make a compulsion towards me by consigning the goods to me without my prior consent and uh, making a compulsion to take the delivery of the deliver the goods right so that's what i am saying right third point therefore The presenting bank will have no obligation. The presenting bank will have no obligation or risk or risk to the party dispatching the goods the party dispatching the goods. Right. Question number three. Attempt yourself as homework and drop a mail to me. I'll give the supporting articles. Right? It's too much of a constraint. For you to uh, read the article now because uh, you, are, you have just got the handout perhaps right but i send the handout beforehand i don't know when we have got the handout so therefore to fair by you i will not tell you to tell the article now itself but uh, do uh, uh, try and read the articles and figure out what the articles are but i'll give the clue of the articles you just read on the article c 4c1 4c2 Article 6, 4C1, 4C2. And consult the answer and send to me by mail. Telling you once again, the answer has to be point form. A lot of marks are given as, uh, a lot of marks are given, 8 marks. So that means you have to put down 4 points. Right, two points carry for one point. So therefore, I need only four points. 
right? You can write five or six, doesn't matter. So you will get eight marks if the four points are there in the rush, but don't write in one bullet, right? So that is for your homework. So I'll do the next, next question. Now, this particular question was repeated more than once. The, one, one of the reasons I come up doing uh, the, the question after that. Right. Your bank received from one of your correspondent banks a broad documented collection for we are told 40,000 to be handled subject to 532. Documents contain a bill of exchange for US 40,000. Two sets of invoices for 25 and 15 with two separate sets of bills of lading written to each invoice. Jovi informs you that the goods in respect of the invoice of $15,000 are due to arrive only in two days, but the goods in respect of the invoice of $25K is due to arrive in only two weeks' time. Right? They request, that is the customer request your bank to release the invoices and the bills of lading related to shipment of 15 against payment to enable them to take delivery and they undertake to pay the balance in time to take delivery in two weeks time. How do you handle this request? So first of all, uh, that's another small exercise you need to do. When you're reading the questions, you should know when they say your bank, your bank like that, you should know to which bank that you are in, to which bank shoes that you need to wear. Now, that is the first thing that you need to do. It says, your bank received one of your correspondent banks, so you don't know whether you are the importer's bank or you are the exporter's bank, so you have to read and figure out. Your bank received one of uh, your correspondent banks abroad, uh, document collection for $40,000 to be handled, uh, subject to 522, obviously, so you are at the importer's bank now. So you are the collecting bank, more correctly, you are the presenting bank. Right, so we'll sum up the summary here. So your bank. So in third, I will say our bank, right? Our bank. What is our bank now? It's a present new bank. Right. So our bank have received a set of documents. The bill of exchange says uh, US dollars, 40,000. 40,000. What this, uh, uh, that's what the bill of exchange says. Bill of exchange says draft value is 40,000. But these documents, there were two sets of documents being attached to one bill of exchange. Two sets of documents. So you have visualized that also. Two sets of documents. One for US dollars 15, another one is for US dollars 25. Two sets of documents attached together, that means two bits of lading, two consignments, two vessels are coming on different dates, landing in Sri Lanka. But the documents are in, uh, in two sets, but uh, only one collection instruction. So that is the thing that derives from here. With a bit of exchange, if it is for 40,000, there should be only one collection. There are no two sets, there are two sets of documents, all right, but it's one presentation. One presentation. So therefore, from here it derives, derives. Little bit of a question to please your, you know this symbol, right? Anybody? Not teasing you, just uh, tell me one or two people. What is this symbol? Don't say it's a right arrow, right? Instead, say something else mathematically. Yes, class? No, no. Yes, any guesses?
Y'all have never heard of that before? Hmm, appears to be. Right. This symbol says concluded. 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 Right? So this is a conclusion. So that's why I put a double arrow here, curvy double arrow with this pointer. So beneficial $40,000 means I have got myself concluded <coughs> that the collection instruction is a sole collection instruction, sole collection instruction for US dollars $40,000. Right? That is the first line. Now we come to the customer story. Now this means we have got a set of documents to deliver for forty thousand dollars. That collection instance may having multiple sets of documents being attached. That's a different scenario, but there's only one collection instruction. <coughs> so what is it? One bill of exchange for forty thousand. So customer has to pay the forty thousand and take the delivery. In other words, right? He cannot take fractions, right? But the customer has a fair story. We'll read out once again. The drawing, drawing is the customer, importer, buyer. Drawing informs you that the goods in respect of the invoice of fifteen are due to arrive only two days time. Two days time. Arrival. ETA. Expected time of arrival. ETA of uh, $25,000 is two weeks. So, in other words, the customer says to the bank without saying, You are asking to pay $40,000, I am just blocking my capital. Because I am unable to pay the consignment worth of forty thousand dollars, only the twenty fifteen k will come within two days' time. I have to wait for another two weeks' time to get the other documents or other goods to be cleared. And for one reason, my capital is getting blocked for unnecessarily for two weeks. And the second reason, maybe he is telling that those has to be you know drilled with the interaction with the customer. So, the other thing, maybe the customer will say, I have told my guy, that is the principal, to send in two separate lots. So, he has done so, but he has given the bank as a single presentation, and the bank has, you know, sent the two documents on the one collection instruction. I never said like that. I wanted him to present two sets of documents. Maybe because of the cost, he has sent in one set. Nevertheless, if I am willing to pay the forty thousand dollars now, we still and uh, take up the documents, right? I will just wait him because I, I don't have the storage capacity for such. So therefore, please do consider of giving the fifteen thousand only now, and within two weeks time, don't worry because he has given a declaration of that declaration called the undertaking. You have given undertaking to the bank. I will show up to yourself. And I will take the documents for sure for the balance part of it. Or you give me the two sets of documents now. I'll pay the 25k documents within two weeks' time when the goods have come. So that's the request by the customer. How do you handle this request? Now you are the manager of impost division. How do you handle this request? Now again, I'm giving a little bit of a task. A bit of a difficult task now. What is the relevant article that they are harping in here? You can have a quick crush on the articles, or if you have, if you have studied a little bit as uh, the earlier student, I can't remember the student's name now. Purnima, yes, Purnima should be able to figure out what the article is. So even though that I say articles are not necessary to mention. You need to know the articles actually 
at least in a little bit of faintish uh, way, so that you could trigger the answer properly. Don't apply common sense. Don't apply common sense. Right. What is the relevant article? Anybody in the class can say? What is the article? I'll give one, one, one minute for that. Okay, you are not very sure of that, right? I'll go ahead with it then. Shall I give another couple of seconds for you to think what the article is? Can you remember last time I did with regard to partial payment? Partial payment? Can you remember that article now? With regard to partial payments? I said there are two articles with regard to partial payment. One is for key collection. Another one is for documentary collection. Documentary collection sub article is the most important article. Can you remember I was studying? What is the particular article? Okay, I'll tell you what the article is. It's 19 B. Abun, you are correct, I think, this time also. I hope that you were. It appears that you have just rushed now uh, the articles. You are right. Not very right because you have to write the sub article. If you are writing to me, right? Sub article 19B. For the exam purpose, if you say as per article 9 of URC, very good. You will not get marks cut, right? So, Purnima is good. Uh, it's article 19B, right? So, I will structure the answer. Don't read the article 19 now. I'll structure the answer. After that, you can literally read the article 19 BS uh, figure out whether my approach is correct and whether you understood my approach and suggested the answer. That is what is important. And one more thing I forgot to tell you earlier. You have to rewrite the answer again and get your fish right. Then your flow will continue. Right? I know as bankers, you are very lazy to write something. Right? As bankers. So you have to write the answer and get the, <clears throat> get the flow right, right? Because that is the thing that you are being expected with the band because these are not MCQ questions. So, so you can make a tick and go on. You have to write somehow, right? So see, as per sub-article 19B of URC 522, by, by writing that, if you can manage to write like that, you have got the mark actually. Right? Because the paper setter knows now, paper, not the paper setter, the paper marker knows or the examiner knows that you you know the stuff, right? It's just a matter of, you know, he's uh, rushing now to uh, get the, put the, assist to you by giving marks so that he can take the other paper. Right? Don't forget the fact that he has a full pile of papers on deck. Right? As per sub article 19B of URC 522, 19B of URC 522. Partial payments, partial, partial, partial means part, fraction, divisions, partial payments. Only will be, only will be accepted, accepted if specifically authorized in the collection instruction underlined. If, if specifically authorized in the collection instruction. That is the phrase. Uh, that uh, the paper marker will hunt. So assist him for him to give a mark. Right. That to be specifically authorized in the collection instruction. Only, only if that's the case that the bank will accept partial payments. Otherwise, no. Right. However, now see, 
when I say however, that gives a little bit of diminished uh, effect for the early sentence. So it's not a negative one, just like although and nevertheless, but when you start the word however, that should be a preceding word before that. Right? You just can't say however and start uh, with a paragraph. You have to state something before preceding so that you can make the diminished clause saying however or negative to the first effect. Right. So when the, when you say however, when the paper marker or the person who corrects the paper sees the word however, he knows that you are going to make a negative point to the statement that you have stated before. Right. However, the presenting bank will release documents however the presenting bank will release documents even though the parcel payments are accepted even though the parcel payments are accepted, that has to be within parentheses. Even though the parcel payments are accepted within brackets. So my sentence was, however, the positive bank will list documents to the drawee. Only after full payment. Only after after full payment of US dollars forty thousand US dollars forty thousand has been received. Because you are answering the question, right? You are not writing the article, you are writing the answer with the support of the article. It has been received. Right, what does it state? It says you are not going to handle as a partial doc payment unless you specifically authorize the collection instruction. If you got uh, you know tame to the customer story, you can accept payments partially, but you are not supposed to these documents until you receive the payment in full. That's what it says. Customer can take months or weeks. In this case, customer can take 14 days if there are no holidays in between. So customer will pay daily and build up the margin so that uh, $25,000 will be paid. But just because he keeps on paying with an undertaking, you cannot release the document for 25 days until you receive the full payment. So in other words, it says, if you release documents, any of these documents, part or in full, you have to remit the 40000 flat. Right? That's what he stated. Right. Third point. The presenting bank, the presenting bank will not be responsible, will not be responsible. will not be responsible for any consequences any consequences arising out of delay arising out of delay in the delivery of documents the delivery of documents here Customer says within two days time this shipment has been come. So I need to place immediately, right? As soon as possible. This will come within two weeks' time. Now the bank has a problem because of the Article 19B. Bank says, no, 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 you can't do that. You have to want, you have to take the 40,000 in gold. You are making the part payment. Then until we receive the full payment from it, we will release the 40,000 worth of documents. That is both. Then the customer is panic and say, no, 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 I want to. Get these documents created as quick as possible. Bank will say no. So that's why it says bank is not responsible. What the bank, the proceeding bank or the voice bank will not be responsible for any ensuing delay. 
for the delivery of documents. Right? That's the third point. But then you have not resisted the customer, right? Now, if you uh, have a glance on the question again, it says, how would you handle this request? Anybody who has by heart of the URC 522 would have fed the customer. So what happens, finally, you will have the set of rules and a set of articles, but you will lose the customers, right? What you have said, they call the articles you have said, but you are not safeguarding the customer. Now you have to make an approach outside the articles. So articles are safe now. You are not doing anything contrary to the article. Otherwise, you get sued from the remedy there. But you are not taken care of the customer's point. Right? So you have to think of that also as wisely. Now, that is the two points that I am going to make uh, now as a suggestion. And uh, without saying the customer, in other words, slang me, fly a kite, I can't reach the documents. Article 19 basis, not to reach. But it's not worth you to be a manager then. Any clerical hand will say that. Right. Next point. If our customer, now you're bad enough for when you reply, you have to say our customer. If our customer. If our customers. Is credit worthy? Credit worthy. Credit worthy. For US dollars, twenty-five thousand. If a customer is credit worthy, for US dollars twenty-five thousand, our bank can extend. Our bank can extend a short term. Short term short term import finance. Short term is for this question for two two or three weeks, right? Two weeks. Short term import finance. Or you can say short term import loan, whatever it is. But it has to be import loan, right? Short term import loan, not a short term loan, not an overdraft. That is short term import loan, right? Short term import finance. And release the documents. And release the documents. For with dollar fifteen thousand. Only, only we can raise only fifty thousand, right? Fifty thousand only by retaining, by retaining, by retaining, retaining to ourselves, right? By retaining, we have got us twenty five thousand worth of documents. Documents, comma, and remit the funds, and remit the funds as per the correction instruction, as per. The correction instruction for US dollars forty thousand. Forty thousand. Whether you are giving an import finance or whether you are giving free of payment or it's not necessary for the remitting bank and for the principal. If you read the documents, part or fraction or whatever it is, that can be treated as, as if that you have reason of course in full. And we have to remit the monies for the full value of the bill of exchange. Bill of exchange is 40,000. Bank has a separate contract with the customer now. It has nothing to do with the correction instruction. 
because the reason why is because he's a credit worthy long standing customer tested time tested customer a valued customer in other words for the bank so therefore looking at the credit worthiness of the customer bank will extend the import finance short term and it is only the 50000 even then we can't give the full documents to you only the 15000 and as agreed when he set off the loan you can reach the 25k document right so finally you can see as agreed as agreed that as agreed is a loan agreement right as agreed bank uh, bank will release the balance 40000 worth of documents bank will release the balance with the 40000 worth of documents after two weeks time after two weeks time right so i have given you homework uh from the uh, that is for the third bullet and uh, the question after the the question that i did now i will do on the next session if you can you can attend the other questions also as well and come at least uh, scribble some answers and come so that it will be easy for you to understand when i am giving the uh, structure the homework question also i will do it but only thing i expect you all to send me an email then i can have a gauge how you write and how you present right till about 210 till about 210 i will try to do a pay into the incoterms right from that point onwards i will try the forex sum again which uh, which i started with the forex assignment 1 right now uh, give me a quick uh, nudge to the chat I want to the URC question that I did now. Just say yes or no. If you say no, I will you know prepare myself once again in the next session and try to simplify once again. Uh, but now I will start the input term. But I need the feedback from you whether you understood the URC two questions that I did. Right, Purnima? Yes, you have done your homework and come. No, I want uh, somebody else to say yes. Perhaps no answer. Right, Gaini. Thank you. Right, we will start the input terms now. Yeah, Nihara, I got it. Thank you. Input terms. We are discussing the version of twenty twenty. Earlier previous version for this is 2010. So I may have given you the handout based on the 2010. There is a little bit of a change for the 2020. That change I will tell because I am not very really sure from the because I could have a check with the paper setter whether he will uh, give a question based on 2020 or 2010. So we will prepare for both and uh, uh, going for the exam is better. Right. Inco terms that is international commercial terms based on the cost and the risk. The cost and the risk uh, involved between the buyer and the seller and vice versa. Right. In other words, what cost the seller incurs when he ships the goods to us the buyer, and the what the allocating cost. That the buyer has to face, in other words, converse, and the risks. Risk means at which point the seller's risk passes on to buyer. So that's what that those are the only 
aspects being discussed in the inco terms. So inco terms are derived out of a contract of sale. If not for the contract of sale, the inco terms will not exist, obviously. But the inco terms is not a fully fledged contract of sale or sales agreement. In a contract of sale, you discuss everything under sun between the two parties, transactions. That is the price, uh, the quantities, and how you are going to make the payment. And if there's a breach of contract, how you address that, and the, what is the profit and loss ratio, everything we discuss in the contract of sale between two parties, which is more <clears throat> tidy than the marriage, the matrimonial affair. Right? Everything under the sun being discussed in the contract of sale. But in good terms, it's not a fully fledged contract of sale. It discusses only the cost and risk. Cost and risk. From buyer to seller and seller to buyer. Generally, these costs from uh, seller to buyer. Been denoted in Article 4. Right? Article 4. Seller's responsibilities towards the buyer being denoted with the capital A symbol A1, A2, likewise up to A10. Then the buyer's responsibilities towards the seller is denoted by the letter B from B1. To be taken. So there are 11 inco terms now. Whether it's from 2010 or 2020 version, there are 11 inco terms. So all 11 inco terms will carry A1 to A10 and B1 to B10. That is why your handout has become bulky a bit. But I have given another summary of the inco term also as well, with a little bit of homework that I have done. So you can basically read that. But if you want to, if you are curious, uh, what you call the <coughs> drill on the particular aspect, then you can refer to the big note. So don't start to read the, except for the preface that I have given, don't start to read the, what you call the article by article, which I have given in the big handout. And do not share the handout also, because it is from the text that I have uh, typed there. But I have given you a summary. Right, that you read over and over again and try to get acquainted with. So these are the responsibilities given by the seller to the buyer and the buyer to the seller, denoted from A1 to A10 and B1 to B10. Right? So we'll discuss in detail of what is A1, A2, A3 and all uh, later. But now we'll have a small uh, pairing to the input so that we'll get a Enough idea what the inco terms are, and we'll catch some interest of reading and coming for the next session. Right. So, as I said, there are 11 inco terms. These 11 inco terms could be divided into two sets of groups. Two sets of groups. Right. One group has four inco terms. That could be used exclusively for sea and inland water. Right? The rest of the incoterm, the seven incoterm, could be used for any mode or modes of. Shipment. Right? Any mode of modes of shipment means they can now listen. This could be used only for sea and inland waterways. This could be used for air. Right? And also it could be used for sea also. Because any mode no. But this uh, four input terms, which I'm going to mention a little while, cannot be used for air. That could be used only for sea and inland waterways. 
but this of several incoterms could be used for a horse as well. Or combination of modes. That particular voyage could have a sea leg and a land leg. For example, if the goods are moving from Colombo to New Delhi, from Colombo to Mumbai, there's a sea leg. From Mumbai to Delhi, there's a air leg or a road leg or a rail leg. Because New Delhi is a land of so likewise, these seven input terms could be used for any mode or modes of shipment. These four input terms could be used only for sea and inner water waste. This is very, very essential. They have been tested more than once in the MCQ area. So you see what are the four input terms. FOB stands for free on board. Before that, the other you could have called FAS. FAS is called free alongside. Free alongside. Alongside, nearby the ship. Seller brings the goods. He doesn't give no put the goods on board the vessel, but he keeps the goods alongside the ship. <coughs> free alongside ship. FOB, free on board. Free on board. Next one is CFR, cost and freight. Cost and freight. Freight is the cargo. Cost and freight. Next one is the CIF. Cost, insurance and freight. Cost, insurance and <clears throat> so you have to remember these four input terms by heart FAS, FOB, CFR, and CIF could be used only for sea and inland waterways. Right? If there's a shipment carrying goods from port to port, Mumbai to Colombo, you cannot use these seven input terms that I'm going to mention now, you have to choose one of these input terms <clears throat> and depending on the responsibility whatsoever from the buyer and the seller, they'll come to a compromise, okay, we'll use FOB, we'll use CFR like that. Only for these, out of these four input terms could be used for any CN in the water. <clears throat> so when you say any mode and modes of people, the balance input terms are, I will like it in here. <clears throat> FCA, free carry. Free carry. Free carry. Carriage free to. Carriage paid to CPT. <clears throat> Carriage and insurance paid to Carriage and insurance paid. <coughs> uh, before that, I forgot one thing, but. EXW, X works. X works. X works, FCA, CPT, CIP. 
that we have that delivered at terminal. Delivered at terminal. You are taking down, or if you are just looking at the summary, just make a small asterisk key here. And down and say, in 2020, in input terms, huh? in input terms, In quarter 2020, this has been changed to this has been changed to the AP. Uh, sorry. DPU. EPU delivered at place unloaded delivered at place unloaded. So this is one change you find from twenty ten to twenty twenty. There are no big change, changes. So get to get ready with both and go because in 2020 there is no DAT, there is only DPU. That is delivered days unloaded. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we have another important call that DAP. The AP delivered at place. Delivered at place. The last input term is delivered duty, delivered duty pay. Delivered duty paid. <clears throat> I'll read out for you again. Excerpt FCA, CPT, CIP, DAT in 2010 version or DPU in the current version, DAP, DDP. Excerpts free carrier, carriage paid to, carriage and insurance paid. Delivered at terminal in case of debt. Delivered at place. Unloaded in the case of DPU on the 2020 version, then that, that is DAP delivered at place and delivered duty paid. And the four input terms could be used for C and inland waterways is FAS, FOB, CFR, and CIF. Right. So I will take one input term for the today's session, and uh, it might pass slightly one or two minutes from 220. Then after that, I will uh, check with the forest sub. So I will take the experts. Experts. EXW. Xworks means the seller ought to keep the goods in assembled form, in other words, in travel uh, worthy packaging. He has to make sure that the, that the goods have been packed in a travel worthy packaging in an exportable manner and should keep in his warehouse 
or in a ex factory or the own premises as agreed by the buyer and inform the buyer inform the buyer so if this if this is a seller's warehouse which has to be kept inside the warehouse as agreed or in a ex factory or in the own premises or in a go down and that has to be this goods has to be travel worthy packaging now this is the seller seller's country and we are inviting the buyer so he has to keep the goods and travel worthy packaging i will say in a exportable manner second one what he has to do he has to notify the buyer he has to notify the buyer notify the buyer so the buyer has to come all the way from his own country and or he has to appoint a representative to representative to to do the work he has to collect the goods load to a carriage right and get the export clearance you have to get the export clearance on your export prices from the foreign country and arrange the voyage up to his country and pay export duty in this same and export duty the other laws as well the seller does sweet nothing seller does sweet nothing because it's highly advantageous to the seller is a dominant party buyer has to do all the dirty work and he has to carry the goods go into the seller's country and carry the goods and go what is the trade term in quote term trade term is in quote term that means x works x w e x w so there are one more responsibility addition to these two these are the five responsibilities and this addition to that seller has to oblige or he has he must assist he must assist i put a asterisk in here so that you can make a note in there he must assist for any documentation formality that the buyer find it difficult of getting when when he try to get the export licenses if there are the difficulty of uh, with the kind of documentary or the formalities especially you can guess if the buyer is unaware of the language and say that if you are contracting with a european uh, uh, french uh, government french country or the france Uh, then the uh, documentation being French, right? So if the if he has contracted with experts, buyer has to go to France and get the documents filled in French. So he will have a difficulty of the language. So in that case, he has to communicate with the seller, and seller must assist. He must assist in documentation. if by a request so his prime responsibility is to keep the goods in exportable manner or travel packaging travel worthy packaging in his warehouse or in own premises and notify the buyer when he does this to you say delivery completed if he has fulfilled this that means that means delivery completed delivery completed now here according to inkerton the word delivery gives a different meaning we know pizza delivery we have lots of delivery in common language but in delivery has a very wide or double meaning or multiple meaning of the word delivery in case of inkerton is at which point the seller risk passes on to buyer right i was slow enough for you to take it down at which point the seller risk passes on to buyer right that's what we call the delivery point so when we keep the goods in packaging travel packaging manner or in exportable form and notify the buyer that it as good as he has delivered the goods to the buyer if we have notified the buyer on day 1 and on day 2 where the goods have not cleared by that on day 2 if the goods have been wrong or goods have been perished or something happened to the goods then it's on the buyer's account account because delivery has already been completed risk has already been passed on to buyer 
no sooner the risk becomes big, but goes off, the risk goes off. Right? So <clears throat> that is X first. I hope that you have understood. So you know, give a nudge to me in the chat box in that case, of course. And read the X works, FCA, FOB, and come next time when you're coming. Just read the X works, which I've done, FOB and and uh, FOB and a phase. In other words, read two or three articles and come. Right. Give me a, a comment on this whether you understood the expert mechanism. A uh, little bit of a, I didn't do a lot, lot in the equators. What I said with this, just say with you understood with regard to risk passing on to the buyer in case of experts. Likewise, you have to find out what is that point. You call that as a critical point, at which point the risk passes on to buyer. Pulling up the question of equators is very, very easy. Yeah, give me a nudge. Right. I hope that you understood that we go over to the um, Forex uh, assignment. One student actually have uh, uh, gave me a, <clears throat> a feedback with regard to the student out of the class. One student. Thank you, Kaushalya. Uh, one student. And uh, she or he has done the, I think she was she, I can't remember the name properly. Uh, is it Nihara? Uh, thank you. Ah, yes, yes, Nihara, I remember your name. So, but I didn't give uh, because she has done a little bit of extra mile and she got stuck with the answer there. Don't be so biased to the answer that I have given in here. I have not, you know, make a double, uh, what do you call the uh, second time or third time I did check the answers. I just given just to give an idea, but more or less, I think it's correct, right? Uh, don't worry, uh, but you have one thing to worry. You know why? The paper marker has only the answers. So therefore, for the method that you are putting across, it will not carry marks. So that is the only concern even I have. If I do the sum even, I might tend to get one or two marks cut because the paper marker has the guideline so guide has to answer. so paper marker will not you know reveal the question. What you call it? some and see what the correct answer is. See which the patient goes to the guide and see if this particular answer is not there, you put a wrong there. So that is the only worry that you need to have. But then once you get used to it, how to calculate properly and cast it and add in and subtract it properly, you will not, not do a mistake, right? Right. So I'm drawing a near situation once again. So <clears throat> likewise, you all have to. Uh, redo the sum once again alone and practice some other right and target the sum with 80 minutes 80 minutes that is with the base of calculation very tough it's tough for me also but that is how we are going to do it right so the first export shipment so in the rush, I might repeat a little bit of things you have to bear up, right? Right. But I will uh, rush a little bit. First ship, uh, the, there are two export shipments for 100,000 each. First shipment is, uh, <clears throat> first shipment is uh, uh, done on the sixth week, during the sixth week from the rate of contract. And two weeks, uh, further two weeks being wasted to receive the proceeds from the rate of shipment. So all in all, there are eight weeks. So when you say eight weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks means you have one month fixed and one month option. Eight weeks means you have to divide by four. Why? With the assumption four weeks is for one month, you will divide by four, you get two without remaining. But you have to have option period. 
So give one out of the two. So we end up with one month option and one month fix. I did tell you, you can afford to have a <clears throat> zero option, but you cannot have a zero fixed period. Right. No, the other way. You can you can afford to have a what you call a, a zero fixed period, but you cannot afford to have a zero option period. Right? I corrected that, right? Uh, question number no, I am uh, talking about the forex assignment. Question number one. It's question number one. I have given only one assignment now. Did I give more than one assignment? I think I gave only one assignment. Yes. Uh, that is for the assignment one, page one, question number one. Right. You got it? Ah, oh, fine, fine. Okay. Right. So, so all in all, there are eight weeks. Base of calculation is comfortable to you. I hope that you have taken down, but don't worry. I will give the base of calculation for the next for three point dollars. That will give a little bit of a refreshing and kind of a flow of writing. Right. So we have eight weeks divided by four. One month fix and one month option. Right. Now you are in the export link. The first paragraph denotes the export link. Right. When you have the export link, your objective has to be code the least possible rate. Code the least possible rate because you are buying less. Right. You go to Elkia, you remember? You go to Elkia. That is, you are receiving in Euro. And you have to give the customer to the exporter in LKR. So Euro has to be converted into LKR. This has to be converted into LKR. So Euro to LKR, there's no market. There's hardly any market. So therefore, Euro has to be converted into dollars. And dollars have to be converted back to LKR. So this I will take as the first leg. And the next leg I will take as the second leg. Euro to dollar, US to dollar, LKR. This is the first leg. And this is the second leg. Now you appreciate with me, in the sum, there's a grid there. The grid, there are two rates being given. US to LKR, you, you are to USD. So second leg being given in here, the first leg given in here. That is why two rates are being given for every sum. You will see, there are two sets being given. Why is that? Because you cannot directly convert one currency from to another currency without getting USD involved. USD can be convert to any currency, but the GBP cannot convert to LKR. Neither the EUR could be connect, uh, converted to LKR without, <clears throat> I don't know whether it's Trump or Biden still, without their consent. Right. So, first leg is you to USD. Now, this is, now I am repeating over and over again. The, same fundamentals. I'm not going beyond that, right? You do your fundamentals right and thorough that. Based on that, you will never uh, fail, right? It's just a matter of practice. So euro to USD, I'm converting means you're selling dollars for EUR. So if you take the position of the US dollars, it's the same. It's the same. So euro to USD is an indirect quote. It's an indirect quote. In an indirect quote, you always sell low. You sell low. You sell low. And USD to LKR, that means you are selling LKR for US dollars. When you are selling LKR for US dollars, means in other words, you are selling LKR and purchasing dollars. So the purchasing of the dollars is a purchase in here, in case of a second leg. But USD LKI is a direct quote. In a direct quote, you always purchase low. So you have to quote the better rate here. So that is why when you have two lesser rates, then you are to LKI meaning is you are to USD, USD to LKI. So same thing I have written in a formulated version. You are to LKR means you are to USD into USD to LKR. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a, right, because USD, USD stuck off and you are to LKR remains. 
So there is no harm for the left hand side. Right? So this is, you have to code the lesser rating here. You have to code the lesser rating here. Here. Yeah? So when you multiply the two least amounts, you get the possible least amount in here. So that is why I said your objective has to be the least rate to be quoted. That is the first thing that it should come into your mind when you are reading the export link. Vice versa, when you are reading the import link, you have to quote the highest possible link. Right. Now, Nihara, you have to check where you have got wrong in there, right? Now, I will come to the, uh, what you call the calculation straight away. USB will look at spot. I am taking 150, there are two cores being given, 150 and 160. I have proved why I need to take, what rate I don't need to take. I have to take the least rate because I am the export link. I proved just now that. So I am taking 150. 150. Now I have one month fixed and one month option. Eight weeks to, the, the, the lag is eight weeks to, so divide by four, I have one month fixed and one month option. So I will say here, and one month forward, at one month forward, 0 0.70 equal to 112, 20. Right, at one month forward, 0 0.70. So I did explain last time why I'm adding that. I will tell again. Right. So spot rate is given as 1150 and 1160. I took the oblique off. Take out the oblique from the handout imaginarily. And give a relationship. Give a relationship with an unequal sign. 1150 is less than 60. So I will give a unequal sign of a lesser, a less sign, right? Unless otherwise you know the sign, it's easy to catch it, right? This is less. Then, first month forward being given as 70, cents. Why I put 0 0.70 here is, I have taken the sense, that is CTS off. To take the sense off, you have to divide by 100. So when you divide 70 by 100, you get 0 0.70. Don't use the calculator. You shift the decimal point two places towards your left hand side. Two places towards the left hand side. Right. <clears throat> so the one more forward B figure being given, look at the grid as 70. I have taken the sense of now 0 0.70 and 0.80. So I have taken the uplink off now. You take the oblique of imaginarily in there also and you are in a ship. 70 is less than 80. Now you see the pair here. The unequal sign, the pointer drifts to one direction. To, in this case, opposite towards the left hand side. So when you have a pair drift into one direction, you can possibly and only you cannot subtract that mathematically is wrong you cannot do uh, in the mathematics you cannot subtract you have to add only to get a uh, what you call a real answer so therefore you have to add that is why i put add here that is why i put add there we got it coming from from algebra right so I put add here. Then the question is, why one month forward? Because I have one month fixed, that is one month. Then I have one month option, that's the second month. So that means I have two months. Why have exercise only one month? Why have I dropped myself the option period? Option period is for you, that is for the bank. Right? And remember one thing, back of your mind once again, all worst scenarios are putting into the customer's account. The customer, customer's king concept is not in here. Right? So, why one month here? Now look at the grid once again with me. One, one month forward says 70, 80. Two months forward, that is, if you are going for the option, 
that you have to dump it in second month. So second month forward is 130, 140. So we'll see the behavior in the other. It says 130, I have taken the sales of by dividing by 100 is 130. And 140 the same way, took the oblique off and given the ship. And I find the same ship here that is left hand side is less than the right hand side. So when you compare these two again, you have the less of unequal side for this side and here or seen here towards the left hand side. So therefore, you have to add, you cannot subtract, you have to add. If you add <coughs> 130 to 150, you get a higher amount than adding 70 cents here. Right, you get a higher amount. But your objective is to quote the least possible rate because you are in the export rate. And therefore, you drop the option exercise. That is why I said one month here. Right? I did for the second time now. Now just tell me whether you understood or not. Specifically in Ihara because she, uh, what do you call, <coughs> came on to me with regard to, with regard to some uh, workings. See whether you understood clearly and the rest of the people also as well. If anybody has missed the class session, by now you should be able to catch up. Tell me quickly whether you understood or not. Or if there's a gray area, Ununderstandable area, just tell me quickly as possible before I proceed. Yes, I'm waiting for your uh, feedback. Give me feedback quickly. Can you do the sum on board? That's what I mean. I'm doing now. Right. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, I can hear. Somebody trying to talk to me, right? Yeah, Gani is clear for you. I got wrong decimal points. That was true, Nima. Okay. But did you get the answer 120? No, no, my question was not the uh, what you call the precise answer. My question was whether you understood why I took at why I put add here and why I put one month. Because you can go for two months, but I exercise only the fixed period, not the option period. That's what my question was. Whether you understood dropping conveniently option period. <coughs> That's what my question was. Right, I hope. Uh, how about other people now? There were a few others also. How shall they? Is they also understood? Right. Gihani has understood. So I just take it uh, averagely. Uh, okay, Purnima, thank you. Right. How shall I give you a feedback? If you are bust up, you just tell me. Right, I will make sure that you will uh, catch it properly. Right, so the cross currency of the UR to uh, LKI is 112, uh, 112 uh, not the UR to LKI, cross currency of uh, the forward currency of one month is USD LKI 112 20. Right, so this all get marks, you get marks one year. Now see, a lot of logic being put for add one month forward 70 cents. You don't get a mark for that. You get a mark for this 112.20. That is the result examiner will have it. Right, Kaushere, thank you. Right, now we'll go to the next one. Because to have a cross currency, you have to have two next to Right, you are to USD. Now if you have a gray area, you will understand that also, specifically addressing to Nihara in this case. <coughs> You are to USP. So, you are to USP is what? One point four one two zero. Now you know why I took the one point four one two zero out of one point four one three. Not I took the lesser figure because I am in the export rate 
I need to quote the least possible rate. Right. One one uh, one point four one two not right. So I have one month fixed and one month forward. Listen carefully. I have one month fixed and one month forward. Now look at the grid along with me. If I go for one month forward, I'll be going for 150, 130. 150, 130. Forget about the decimal points today. I will do it. Correct the decimal points later. We'll do, take care of the modulus figure. 150, 130. Right? If I take the option period, that is, uh, that we're going for the second month, it says 280, 260. 280, 260. Now, this is the one month forward. This is the two month forward. That's how they are given. Right? Now, see, if you take the oblique curve of this, now on top I have a spot figure that is 1.4120. I took the oblique curve and 1.4130. So given the receipt, 1.4120 is less than 1.4130. If I take uh, the given receipt for this, 150 is greater than 130. So if I consider these two, I have to subtract. There's no way that I could add. I have to subtract. I have to subtract. Right? So if I subtract, I have to subtract 150. Right? So, what is the 150 correctly speaking? It has to be this is how it has been stated in the 150 cents. I took the cents off and take the decimal point two places towards the left hand side. That means 0, 0, 0. So, 0, 0, 1, 5, 0 is the figure here. In other words, so I have to subtract that. If I go to the second month for 260, and if you take the public form and give a mean ship, 280 greater than 260. If I compare these two now, still I have subtract. If I subtract the second month, I'm subtracting a higher amount. If I subtract a higher amount, I will get a least result. And therefore, I go for the second month forward. Right? For the time being, there could be a gray area. But I'll repeat that. We'll see how you understand that. So your is spot 1.42 now. I will say this two months forward equal to 0028. One point four one four not nine two five. Oh my subtract is correct there. Right. Now you know why I took less here. Why I subtracted, you know. The question is why I took the two months forward. If I take the one month forward, I had to subtract only one fifty. If I take the two months forward, I have the chance, opportunity, I miss the bank, I have the chance of deducting more. Deducting more from the quarter rate. So deducting more means I'm here. That's a tendency that I can give a relief rate. My profit margin will go up. So instead of exercising the, uh, what do you call it, instead of dropping off exercising the option period, I will exercise the option period also as well. If I go for the second month forward, I will have the option of uh, giving a brief way, and therefore, I will say this two months forward 1.4092. Right? Right now, just tell me whether you got it right now. That one, Nihara, now you understood the error that you have committed in there. Give me a what you call that the rest of the paper also as well. <coughs> in the meantime, I will proceed, and therefore. UR12K is equal to 
you are to university university to where okay you are to university is 1.4 not 92 you are to look at is 120 multiply and give it for four decimal points Under fifty-eight point one one two one one two two. The next item is four. That is less than five. Therefore, I will give it for four decimal points. One five eight one one two two. So the answer that I have given in the question on the right is one hundred fifty-eight point one one two two. So you all got got that now? Are you got give, give, given me a feedback, right? Right. Okay. If there's any difficulty about the challenge, just let me know. Huh? Based on this, uh, uh, what do you call the uh, this type of problem of chat only? I will, you know, get myself prepared and come, especially for the treasury stuff. It's extremely difficult for me to, you know, <coughs> uh, kick you up with regard to online session unless you give me a feedback, right? So the question is actually focus on the Roman two. Calculate the exchange rate for the forward exchange contract for the export shipment. Describe the base of calculation we did that, and determine the amount John Emilio will expect to receive. So this is not the answer. So therefore, you can say <coughs> John Emilio will expect. John Emilio will expect. Proceed from his first export. Proceed from his first export. Equal to area under fifty eight point one one two two multiplied by the value of the shipment. That is hundred thousand. Right? You multiply and put that. Here, okay, ah, fifteen million eight hundred eleven two hundred and twenty. Right? How do you multiply this? You can take the calculator. But I have seen many students. I had to admit the fact that I have done couple of paper marking solves as well. Then I have noted that up to this point, the children have done correctly. But when they fed to the computer, they invert and feed it. Instead of one five eight one one two two, they will feed one five one five eight two two one one. This is answer straw. My mark is for this or for this. So the best thing is to multiply mentally. We have four different points now. Hundred thousand carries five zeros. Hundred different point carries five zeros. So therefore, put one zero and separate the things. There are four decimal points. If you say hundred thousand, that means five zeros, add a zero here and separate the figures. And if it is if you multiply by two, two hundred thousand, add a zero and multiply by two, and you separate the figures. Right. We'll go to the second export. Uh, second export. Right. Take down the base of calculation of the second export. Caption: Second export shipment or second export. Say, this shipment is made. This shipment is made. Ten. I'm taking from the first paragraph, right? 
10 weeks from the date of contract. 10 weeks from the date of contract. <clears throat> It will take for the two weeks to receive proceed for the rate of shipment. It will take for the two weeks to receive proceeds from the rate of shipment. Therefore, contract will have to be booked. Therefore, contract will have to be booked. Contract will have to be booked. 12 weeks from the date of contract. 12 weeks from the date of contract, which is for which is for two months fixed and for one month option. Divide by four is three without remaining. You have to give one for option, then two months fixed. You didn't show this in the paper. That has to be done mentally. Two months fixed and for one month option. So remember, it's two months fixed and one month option. So USB to LKR, but we are in the export leg, so we are in the same mindset of the earlier shipment. But what is that? To quote the this rate. The spot rate we take 150 therefore. So I have two months fixed. Two months fixed. Remember class, <coughs> when you have uh, the fixed period, you have to start from that fixed period. Now look at the grid. You start with the spot, then one month, two months, three months, and then it goes. I have two months fixed. So therefore, I have to check the two months forward first. You can't go to the first month. You have to go for the second month forward. That is two months fixed. The option, the one month option means you have to go to the third month. So you are checking what is profitable to apply. Right. So two months fixed is uh, 130, 140. Third month uh, forward is 200-210, so therefore I will say add two months forward. One thirty. One hundred twelve. Now you see, you know what the reason I have added because one hundred thirty compared with one hundred forty. One hundred thirty is less than one hundred forty. Therefore. I have to add to the spot rate. Right? Why do the two months also is understandable now? Because if I take the option period, I have to take 200. So I have to add 200. If I add 200, there's a tendency that I quote a higher rate. My objective is to rate quote the least possible rate. So therefore, I will terminate from two months. I will not exercise the option period. You needn't write those things. You just say add two months forward. 130, 112, 8, 1 mark. Next one. Euro to USD. Spot. 1.412 now. Again, we have two months fixed and one, uh, one month option. Two months is 280 compared with 260, you have to subtract. If you go to the option period at the third month forward, then it's 430 compared with 410. Still, you have to subtract because 430 is higher than 410. Higher the amount you subtract, lower the amount you get it. So, therefore, in this case, of course, I will say this, but I'll go for the option also, and therefore, it's three months forward instead. <clears throat> and here, you have to be very careful. Here, 0043. Your method is right, your logic is right. If you put the wrong figure, is your marks you will not get it. So it's 0, 0, 040. Don't they just say 0. 0.43? It says there you have to take the sense of shift the visible point towards the left hand side two places.
1.4077. Subtract with this offer, you can use the calculator if you want. Therefore, UR12 care is equivalent to, I will not write the sub-formula. I wrote the formula earlier to explain. It's not necessary for you to write US, UR12 care is equal to UR2 USD and US2 12 care. It's not necessary. So you say UR12 care is 1.4077 into 112 AD. Under fifty eight point seven eight eight five. Under fifty eight point seven eight eight five. Uh, this figure is six, right? This figure is six. So therefore, I will add one to the fourth decimal basis point. Now, this way you have to be careful because this is the figure that the examiner will have. Under fifty eight point seven eight eight six is the correct answer. Right? So therefore, amount of export proceeds will expect by John Limited for the second export shipment. That line you can write it now. Amount of export proceeds John Limited will expect for the second export shipment is equal to under 58.786 multiplied by the value of the shipment. It's two equal, ship, equal shipments, that is uh, 100,000 each. So therefore, you multiply by 100,000. Here you get 47 points, 100,000 have five zeros. You add a zero, you add a zero and separate the figures. That means 15, 878, 878, 86. I have added the zero here. You get the figure 15,878,860. So this is the way that we have got it. Right. Now we will move to the third uh, part. Remember, we have uh, skipped the first part. We will do the first part next time. In the export deck, there are a little bit of complex area with regard to cancellation. That is why I chose the second part, right? Now we move on to the third part, which is a extension of the second part. Uh, third part says, I have only seven minutes, now we'll try. Calculate the profit made or loss incurred by John Limited on the cancellation of the forward exchange contract for the second export shipment. Now, Read the paragraph between the two bridges. There are two bridges, so the small window has been given here. There's a paragraph in between that. Read that. We'll rush it that quickly. All the shipments we made according to the schedule with the exception of the second export shipment. So that's why it cancelled. Right? We plan the production delays and kind of thing. When the cancellation note has been given to the bank, on the 10th of January, 10th of January, on the top of the second grid, the, uh, what you call the uh, cancellation date been given. Original contract was 15th October 2008. Cancellation has come on the second, uh, sorry, 10th January 2009. Those things remember, right? Right. So, write the cancellation. That's the part three. Cancellation. Cancellation. Okay. Now, second export shipment is cancelled now. Now, that's why I kept this, huh? That's why I kept this. So, I also will remember. Right. Under the caption cancellation, say, uh, 
forward exchange contract for the second export shipment was made. Forward exchange contract for the second export shipment was made. Was made. Was made. For two months fixed and for one month option. For two months fixed. If I X E D yeah? for two months fixed and for one month option. Fixed period ends. Fixed period ends. Fixed period ends. On 15 December 2008. On 15 December 2008. Right? 15th October for the contract. Original contract was 15th October. 15th October, 15th November, one month. 15th November to 15th December. Another one month, or all, all in all, it's a second month, two months. One month, second month. We have booked the contract for two months fixed and for one month option. So that's why I said fixed period ends on 15 December. 15 December. However, Cancellation request being made. However, the cancellation request being made. On 10th Jan 2009. On 10th Jan 2009. But not nine. Not nine. We have to continue the center. Let me explain it a little bit. Now, 15 October to 15 November, one month. 15 November to 15 December, two months. So, from here to here is the fixed period. Right? 15 December to 15 of January next year will be the option. Option period. That is how this three month goes. From here to here fixed, from here to here option. So the cancellation, re cancellation request has been made, therefore, during the option period, during the option period between 15 December and 15 January only, 10 January comes. So this uh, cancellation request be made during the option period. So that part we are right. Right? So we have said, However, the cancellation request has been made on 15th, uh, 10th January 2009, which is during the option period. Which is during the option. Those are the words that the uh, exam will catch it during the option period. So you are not going to write, uh, draw the diagrams, huh? I just put it uh, for you to, so, so that I could explain you better. So cancellation request be made during the Option period. Underneath. Therefore, therefore, profit and loss. Therefore, profit and no loss. Due to cancellation of forward exchange contract. Due to cancellation of forward exchange contract, will have to be calculated on on spot rates, spot rates, spot rates. At the prevailing date of cancellation. 
at the prevailing date of calculation. So remember, if there's a cancellation occurs during the option period, you have to take this part of the cancellation type. Part rates, right? Therefore, U S two L K R is equal to under thirteen thirty. U R to U S D is equal to. 1.395. Therefore, U R 12 K is equal to 113.30 into 1.395. I'll take extra half a minute. Under thirteen point three zero into one point three nine five, that will give you one fifty eight point five three five. Right. So we'll uh, in the class from today. That's a little bit of a gray area. I need to explain why I took these two rates. These are the highest rates that have to be explained. Don't try to visualize. Take it as it is. I will explain this and go go further. First part of that particular question, which you have the import section. Uh, in the meantime, uh, do the uh, two export legs uh, with the base of calculation and see whether you can you know touch it within 18 to 20 minutes time. You have 39 minutes for this question, but try and finish at least by 20 25 minutes time. Target 40 minutes. Right. And the URC question. The second bullet, give me a feedback and uh, read a couple of articles in the eco terms and come from the CFOB and CFR when you're coming next Sunday. Right, before I go, I'll take uh, about half a minute from now, actually, I'm including the next session. Uh, whether you understood cancellation, I will do it again. Uh, I have a little bit of time issue now. Up to that point, whether you understood, you give me feedback so that I could, you know, come at a fresh to do the cancellation only next time. So give me a feedback and go. <laughs> 